Greetings hobbies, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're going to have a look at how to sculpt Teruges, Paterges, the dangly leather bits that you find on armour sometimes. So in this video we're actually going to look at two different techniques of making these, each with their own positives and negatives. I wouldn't say one of them is better than the other, they just work in different situations. And one of the fantastic things about Blender is it gives you the opportunity to get to similar or same results in different ways depending on what workflow you like. I'll also say that actually this came about after having a conversation with a guy called Wilf who's over at Divergent Realms. I'm going to put his Instagram in the description of this video. He makes some absolutely fantastic models and I really really would suggest checking him out. He also has a Patreon for those models as well so do check him out. It was an absolute pleasure to have a conversation with him. He's an awesome sculptor and a great guy to share various ideas with me so that I could talk about multiple ways of doing this not just my own. So I've got two of my Terminator models here showing this sort of classic Terminator armor and we're going to add some of these dangly leather bits and I'm going to start with the technique that requires the most setup in advance. Now before we do this we are going to be using curves and we are going to need some of the extra curves that you can get so I need you to go to edit and preferences and if you don't have extra objects enabled just type in extra and add this extra objects curves. What that means is when you press shift and a and go to curves you have all these extra options and we're going to need one of those. But to start with, we're going to have a curve that we have as standard, and that is going to be a Bezier curve. And then we get our Bezier curve just here. We go into edit mode. We can start editing these points around. So we're just going to get this from this bit in the armor. So it's just G to move it around, R to rotate. We can also S to scale these up and down, depending on what you want your curve to do. So again, I'm going to R there, G to there somewhere. Let's have a look at this side on. Yep, we need to rotate a little bit here as well. And let's bring that to the center of this and we'll have two of these. And if you want to, we could scale that down, move that up a bit and then E to extrude a little bit more. And then obviously we can have a little bit more control. It's up to you what you decide you want to do with this, but it's very easy to fiddle around with these curves. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in a second after we've done the basic setup. The other thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to put an object onto this curve. And we can do that very easily if we come over to the curve data properties down here. It's the green line that looks like a curve. And you come to where it says geometry. If you come down to where it says bevel, you have the option to make it well round. But we don't want to do that. Let's put that back to zero. We want to use an object. And for that, you need to select a curve. Notice you can't use a normal mesh. You're going to select a curve, and then that's going to be added to this as its profile. So this is where the extra object comes in. Shift and A, curve, and I'm going to go down to this rectangle. Now, this is going to be far too big at this point, and there are some things that we need to deal with. Now, we can modify this and use this option here, but I'm actually going to show just how we'd normally edit it. But you could put your widths in here and your lengths and things like that. But I'm just going to press S to scale that down, and then I'm going to press S and Y to scale it on the Y axis, actually maybe a little bit more. And importantly, we need to get rid of the fact that this is filled. So while I'm selecting this object, so back into object mode, not edit mode. We're gonna to come to our curve properties, go all the way to the top, and I don't want a fill mode, I want none. And then we can go back to our original curve, come to our object and select that curve there, and it will make this curve, and let's shade that flat so we can see what that looks like. Probably still a bit too big. Let's scale that down, and you'll notice it scales everything in real time. Next, this isn't looking particularly smooth, if we scroll up, we can change our resolution. I'm going to up that to 36, so it's now a lot smoother. And if I go into edit mode, what's great about this is we can actually affect this very easily by also twisting this around. So you just do that by pressing Ctrl and T, and that allows you to twist, as well as then having the rotation that you can do as well. Or you can move this around. So this at this point is looking a little bit long. Let's shorten that. And let's control and T that around a little bit. Maybe somewhere there. And we've got this nice sort of flowing shape. And if we do multiples of these. Though before I do that. We don't have this filled in. So we do want to scroll down back to where the bevel is. And click fill caps. And that will fill that in. Though we will need to sort one thing later. And then from this point on, it's really easy. We can just shift and D and duplicate this. So I could put one over here and I could fiddle with these curves somewhere like that. And then control and T to twist that round so it can move around our armor that we've got here. Let's do something like that. And we can rotate that round a little bit there. So it flows over this little bit of armor. 
one more, so Shift and D, and we're just going to make some minor modifications to this one, so it's not identical to the one next to it. So let's Control and T that to rotate it around a bit more, and then let's just move that over there. So we get these Taruges, and we can always come here and scale this up or down for whatever we want. So a little bit more setup, but it's really quick to do. Again, we'll talk about some positives and negatives of this technique in a second. The second technique doesn't use curves. Instead, I'm gonna shift an A and I'm going to bring in a plane. Let's G that over to this one. Let's S to scale it down quite a bit. And then we're gonna press R and in my instance Y and 90 to rotate that round there. Let's bring that up to where we want it. And this is going to be our basic shape. And for this one, this is much quicker to set up, but in some ways it has a few fewer options and other hindrances with it. So positives and negatives of each. So all I'm gonna do is go into vertex mode, select those bottom two vertices, and then E, and I can just extrude this out as much as I want to make my shape. Then back into object mode, and we need to deal with the fact that, well, this looks horrible, it's really angular, so we're going to use a modifier and we're going to use a subdivision surface. So that's gonna smooth this out nicely. In fact, we might want to add a few more curves in here. So let's G that back. Let's G that one back as well. And there. And there. And you can see we're getting a much smoother curve. Let's move these ones forward slightly. Something like that. And to smooth that, we can just up our levels of smoothing. Great. But it's got this weird rounded edge. It's also got it on the top here. We want to stop that, but... Normally, to do that with a subdivision surface, we'd click this simple button, but now it's all gone. So what we want to do is we do a different method of smoothing it, or preventing the smoothing on these corners. If you click on Advanced, let me come down to the bottom where we can see this. So come to Advanced, and where we've got Boundary, if you click Keep Corners, it keeps the corners quite nicely. So that will solve that problem. The other way of doing this, if I just undo that, is you can select all of the edges, so there, there, let's go there, there, and then the one at the top. And you could press Shift and E, and you can change your edge crease by Shift and E and dragging to one side, or N, come to the item, and you can change your mean crease there. So up to you which way you're going to do that. I'm going to go with the method of using just the corners, as I think it's a little bit easier. But there are other things you can do with this mean crease that are quite nice, so choices are there. Finally, we need to add some thickness to this. So add modifier, solidify, and if I come to the side, I can just change the thickness up to add our thickness there. And then let's move some of these points around. Just gonna G that one there. If you do want to make these easier to see, you can also come to your subdivision surface modifier. And if you click on this button there on cage, it will now be on the mesh. Though this does give you a slightly distorted view of how this is working. So once again, Shift and D, I can just make multiples of these go into vertex mode and move these around so that I can change the shape of my Taruges. And with the other one, we can also just come into the vertexes, come here and then let's say, for example, press R and then we're gonna press Z to lock it to the Z axis and we can twist things around. So it's not like this is not an option for this version. So there we go, let's move these slightly closer to each other just so when we do this comparison, it's nice and easy to do. So, which method is better? Well, as I said, this very much depends on what you want to get. This method over here has a quite simple way of just going to apply all or applying the modifiers one by one to get this sorted. For this method, where we're using our curve, we have to right click, convert to, and then mesh. And because we've got a slight issue with these fill caps here, where they're not actually perfectly connected, what we need to do is either press a, M, and merge by distance, or if you've got machine tools, just click three and it's fixed it, so it's not too much of an issue. In terms of your mesh, both of them we can control how smooth this is, but it is worth noting that if I come to vertex mode here, this has created a lot more geometry, which in some ways can make it smoother than this one. But you also have the positive here that this is much simpler geometry of straight lines, so maybe less taxing for your computer. So again, swings and roundabouts on which one you're gonna prefer. Using the curve has the benefit that we can just press S to scale up, which is really nice, and you'll scale everything, which is useful. Whereas this one, you're gonna to have to scale individually, or you could just scale, but it's gonna scale in all axes. So that might not be what you want. However, if you come into vertex mode, 
you can do some funky things where say you want the bottom to be thicker you could just scale this out and you can have some nice variation in your actual thickness here now you can do this with a curve if I go into edit mode and grab this curve and press alt and s you'll notice you can scale this as well you can scale or taper the curve but a big point if I come into this one and do the same thing so alt and s and make it skinnier you'll notice if I come to isolation mode that this has made this skinnier in every direction which is a problem if you're going to 3d print it because it's going to well get skinnier in every direction and become less solid whereas in this version with your plane you can just s and it's still going to be the same thickness backwards because that's controlled by our solidify modifier so if that's something you want to do you may be slightly better off with the plane option finally if you want some really sharp edges and when i mean sharp edges i mean to the folds you can do that here for example i can just press shift and e and i can start adding in a quite leather like sort of kink as it folds leather can fold in that way but you can do the same thing with your curve as well if i go to edit mode select my curve here you'll notice there's less curves so this will have more of an extreme effect that so you can add more in if you just click v and change it to vector you can then change each one individually so for example i could g and move that there let's move this around and have that kink in the same sort of way now in both of these this is going to cause some problems with the geometry let's just convert this to a mesh where you're going to have some overlapping geometry that's going to sort of come in here and that can be a potential problem but you will also have the same thing when you do this with your solidify modifier where oops let's just apply those you can get some issues here with those overlapping if you make this really steep so similar outputs on both of those just different methods of going about them the final thing that you can do with our curve version is if you want to you can come in and not just scale but modify this original curve let's just bring this up so we can see it next to our shape and if you come into edit mode you can for example let, let's g and x that to move that that way i'm going to do the same for this one and each of these so i'm just grabbing the handle and moving them back and you can make this nice sort of arcing shape for this as if it's being curved in the wind though i will point out if you do this and then convert it to a mesh you then end up with just as much in terms of geometry as you would over here so there we have it two method of making taruges depending on what you want to do and your method of going about them now in a future video we are also going to cover a really funky way of doing this instead using geometry nodes where we can add a lot of little extra bits in which may save you time but is obviously going to take a little bit more setup. If you want to make sure you see when that video lands do hit the subscribe button and if you found this video useful I'd really appreciate you hitting that like button as it helps spread the channel around and allows more people to see it. Have a great day guys.